Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Studio K, Paula's Kitchen. We're in the midst of season three. We're on episode nine already. Today, we are going full Scottish. We got a wonderful and intriguing recipe from one of our patrons. It's called Chicken Bonnie Prince Charlie. There's got to be some history there. I can't wait to share it with you. And it features an amazing Scottish liqueur called Drambuie. So, what we're comprising or what we're making today is some boneless skinless chicken breast uh, there's going to be four of them in the recipe and four wonderful apples so it's very autumny i'm excited about this we've got some wonderful drambuie had to run to the liquor store for that some whipping cream chicken broth butter almonds and then we're going to dredge our chicken in salt pepper and flour the typical I am excited to make this. We have never had this before and it just seems like a savory autumn supper. So let's get cooking chicken Bonnie Prince Charlie. Hey folks, let's talk about Drambuie. This liqueur is actually made of scotch whiskey, heather honey, herbs and spices. And the legend that has to do with Bonnie Prince Charlie is that after the Battle of Culloden in 1746, he escaped to the Isle of Skye and sheltered with the McKinnon clan. And in gratitude, he shared the recipe for his most favorite liqueur. And that is supposedly where Drambuie came from. Um, there was also a gentleman named James Ross in, uh, on the Isle of Skye. He was a hotelier and in the 1800s he actually perfected this recipe. So a lot of people actually get credit for it. It is a very popular, popular liqueur around the world. And it is going to present a wonderful flavor to this chicken dish. The recipe came from a website called RampantScotland.com. So I'm going to share that with you in the description box. Alrighty. First step, what we're going to do is I have a variety of four apples that I picked up at the grocery store. When I cook with apples, I always like to use more than one kind. So I've got a Granny Smith, a Gala, a Red Delicious, and a Fuji. <laughs> so the first step is I need to peel and core these apples and get them ready. My chicken is already trimmed and ready to cook, so my next prep step is to work on the apples. So. Let me just, I got a couple of bowls here and let me just grab my Granny Smith and uh, obviously there's no real trick to peeling an apple. When I made, I told you I majored in foods in college and a Miss Laubacher always taught us the art of uh, cutting these in long, long strips and there was an old legend back in the day that you would take one of these, throw it over your left shoulder and whatever letter it landed on the ground was actually going to be the initial of the person you married. <laughs> hey, fun stuff, what can I say? <laughs> All right, let me get the apples peeled and then we're going to do the coring step. So stay tuned with me. All right, I got all my apples peeled and I've got three of them cored. I just left the last one because I just love this little gadget. I think we got it at Lehman's in Amish country in Ohio and it's an apple corer and cutter. The recipe calls for big slices on this. So there we go. I got some big slices and then really all you have to do is in case you need to trim a little something off the bottoms. Um, it's just a fun. I'm not real big on a lot of kitchen gadgets. If you've been watching me you know I kind of do things manually but sometimes I love it. I was just reminiscing with cameraman Dale cutting up apples and using a bunch of different kinds of apples. Reminds me of making apple desserts with the Canadian family and Dale's dad. Such a fan of the Northern Spies. You can't get those here in Vegas, but those are such great cooking and baking apples. Anyway, here we are. You can take a look in the overhead. I've got a wonderful mishmash of apples four different kinds and I'm excited to get going. Now the recipe calls for three quarters of a stick of butter and it's not specific so I'm thinking that half of it we're using for the chicken and the other half we're using for the apples or at least that's what I'm going to try to do. So let me clear this off. I'm going to get out a saucepan and we are going to cook these apples in some butter. All right, folks, I got my saucepan out and I put uh, part of that butter in to get the apples cooking. So the recipe says 
to gently put these in, cook them slowly, and don't stir them because you don't want to break the apples or make apple sauce. So, although I don't think we could break something like a Granny Smith, <laughs> they're pretty tough. So let me just get this butter melting, and then I'm going to gently put these in. Boy, it doesn't take apples long to start turning brown, does it? Look how quickly that happens, folks. <laughs> let me just drop these in. And the uh, recipe's not exact. It basically says we're just going to cook them until they soften up. So let me get them coated with some butter. Dale's very intrigued. He's actually saying, this is a chicken dish? Yes, this is a chicken dish. <laughs> All right, honestly, I'm loving this already. Butter coated apples. I'm glad I used a bigger saucepan because this is quite a lot of apples. All right, let's see what happens with these as I cook them down. I will be right back and we'll kind of uh, monitor this. Well, hey, I moved the apples over to the other burner so I can get my chicken started. If we weren't doing a cooking show, of course we'd be doing these simultaneously. So let me just show you real quick in this camera. I am breaking the rules. I'm giving them a little stir. But you can see that they are starting to soften up, but it's taking its time, and I don't want to rush that step. So I'm just going to let those simmer away. Meanwhile, I put my other uh, half of the butter in my frying pan, and I need to dredge in flour and a little salt and pepper. If you've watched Paula's Kitchen before, you know I love to do this in just a little plastic bag. It's just the best way to dredge chicken. Let me just get that over there where it belongs. There you go. <laughs> okay, so I'll just put a chicken breast in here and go like this, like I do. Shake it off. Ooh, baby. Nothing like frying chicken in butter. <laughs> this, I assume this recipe serves four. It doesn't really say, but since you're making four chicken breasts and four apples, I'm, I'm pretty well guessing that's what we get. And, and kind of the harvesty theme, I went with some butternut squash for our side dish. All righty, let me turn that fire up a little bit, get a sizzle going, and we will keep an eye on things here in the kitchen. Stick with me, we'll be back. Is there anything that smells better than chicken frying in butter? OMG, we steak. are both a steak. Okay, <laughs> cameraman Dale says steak frying in butter. We're both standing over this pan, it's just Fabulous. So, real quick, take a look at our apples. I went ahead and shut those off because, again, we don't want them mushy. They are a side accompaniment to our chicken. And while you were away, this happened. Look how beautiful. The recipe says they should be nice and well browned, and I would say this is well browned. <laughs> we got lots of sizzle going on here in Paula's Kitchen today. So we are on the uh, second side for this. Let me just roll the butter around to make sure it's underneath. And uh, these will be cooked through in no time. Um, shout out to Denise in Utah for the recipe. She sent it to me a long time ago. It's taken me a while to get to it, but uh, I have a feeling it's going to be well worth the wait. So thank you, Denise. All right, guys, we'll be back when the chicken's done. Whew, we got some splatter going on here, but that's okay. All right, the chicken is dark brown on both sides. Next step, we are going to take a half a cup of our chicken stock. Oh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. The drambuie comes first. Two to three tablespoons of drambuie, and we are to sprinkle it over top of the chicken breast. Ooh. <laughs> and then we do our half a cup of chicken stock. Look what's happening in the pan, you guys. Oh my gosh, talk about deglazing. Look at this. Wonderful smells coming out of our kitchen. Put the lid on and we are gonna simmer that and finish the chicken cooking for 10 minutes. Dale and I were talking about the drambuie when we opened it. 
You might have heard of a famous drink called the Rusty Nail. That's typically what you make with Drambuie if you go out to a bar and get a Drambuie liqueur drink. I've never had one, neither has he. Maybe we'll have to go down to the strip and try one. Alrighty, we're cooking our chicken. We'll be back for the last step. Ladies and gentlemen, the reveal. I had actually opened it a moment earlier, so a lot of the steam escaped, but look at how beautiful this chicken is. It smells a little bit like soup because we've got the stock in there, but then you've got the honey and the herbs and the, the whiskey and oh my goodness, it's amazing. So next step, let me take the chicken out. I just have a little pie dish standing by to set it in. This looks so wonderful. I know it's going to be super moist and tender. Let me just set those, oops, <laughs> slippery little buggers. Um, all right. Now, if I needed more Drambouille in the pan to deglaze, I could use some, but I certainly don't. I think we are in good shape. Next step, I need one cup of heavy whipping cream to finish off the sauce. And I'm going to gently cook this, but not boil it. So I have my spurtle standing by to just take all these little bits off the bottom of the pan. And I think for this, I'll turn it up a little bit more than a simmer, just a little bit higher. There we go. And then the last step, it calls for some toasted almonds. Truthfully, I've never toasted almonds before. Um, I had to actually look up on the web how to do that. It's actually very simple. You simply put them on a flat cookie sheet or something in one layer, and you toast them in the oven at 350 for five minutes. Boom, done. <laughs> so I have those ready as well. All right, let me come back to you when this looks done and we will be doing our final steps. I've been gently minding my pan here and this is nice and hot, not boiling, but hot. So here are my almonds toasted, put those in. Apples, almonds, chicken, drambouille. Wow, this is gonna be a flavor explosion. And now folks, it's basically done. It goes over top of the chicken and we are ready to serve. There we go. And there's no thickening really going on. And let me show you in the overhead the final product. What do you think? <laughs> hey, Let's plate this up. Let's have dinner. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our friend Bob Mason from Colorado. Bob very kindly is sharing his piping talents with us and we are so grateful. He is so good. We are going to use him, with his permission of course, in Scotchmas because his background, his filming, his playing, his it's kilt. just gorgeous. Come on. His kilt. Yeah, <laughs> you can't get a better Scotchmas in intro than that, right? And that of course is the Sky Boat Song which is associated with Bonnie Prince Charlie and his escape to the island. Isle of Skye, which we talked about earlier. And it might have sounded uh, familiar because it's from Outlander. It's the theme song of the Outlander TV show. But it's an well. actual folk song. It absolutely is, from back in the 1700s. All right, enough of that. Yeah, let's stop blathering. All let's right. Eat. This is amazing. Just amazing. Visually stunning. I am just so jazzed about this. I'm going to Go try ahead. these apples. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Dig into a buttered apple. These, oh. are they just about right? Oh my gosh. I wasn't sure. Oh, those apples are something else. Mm. A little bit of squash. This is squash. Oh, the heck with that. I'm, make, I'm going into the chicken. Mm. I'm thinking this is going to be super tender, although you know the chicken we buy at the grocery stores here in Vegas or anything, but let me dip in my sauce. What is it? I love it. Yeah? I had to take a minute. 
There's a lot going on. Whatever the whatever's in the drambuie has flavored the chicken stock, right? The chicken stock comes through. That's really good. And the whipped cream just adds a richness. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow. Wow. I'm a fan. I'm so excited about something new. How many thousand chicken recipes have we all tried? <laughs> this one. Oh my gosh, it's so great for fall. I got an almond in that bite. So did I. Mm. Mm -hmm. And this squash too. I just love squash. Yeah, this is just buttered butternut squash. Yeah. Mm. I say two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. It's beautiful to look at. It was easy to make and great flavor. Yeah, it's great terrific. flavor. Mm. All right. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Why not? <laughs> yeah, don't forget <laughs> to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these nice people, Paula, no. before we Dig in. I'm digging in. Yeah. I've, I've got dinner on my plate. <laughs> All right. I hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.